There's only one man clever enough to have perpetrated such a dastardly crime. Huh. And I thought you were ready to give up. You have your own tea house? What the heck? Where do you have a tea house? Alright, guys. <laughs> so you sorry. Have a tea house? I have my own tea house. We're in my own Discord. Unfortunately. And, uh. Let me tell the players I'm ready. You're ready. The like old ready boy. Alright, thank god the players waited for us. The, yeah, our, our own CSL Discord uh, caved in on us, so it's okay though. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate for us. <laughs> yep. It is, you know, it is unfortunate. Yep, indeed, but it's okay. We're in uh, Support for Foods Weeb House. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I'm not sure if you. I don't Good. belong here. I don't know about you. No, oh, I do. I absolutely do. <laughs> so, yes. ladies and gentlemen, we've got RMU versus UBC Sports here in a round of eight, the second round of eight of today. Earlier, we did see uh, a matchup this earlier today. I wasn't sure what the score is. I, I have no clue what, what happened during that matchup. But we're here for RMU versus UBC. Also, how you doing, man? I, I broke a lot of traffic laws getting home this fast, and then it turned out I didn't need to. So that was... Hmm. Anyway, so last time we saw RMU, uh, it was a very close game, and they almost lost, but they didn't, and that's why they're here. And Welshi showing that he's mad about that, and that's why he got the first pick. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen here on Nuke especially. I really like Nuke. I, re I like, really like Nuke. And Richie is going to get a pick on the Boom Boom, so it's a 4v4. It looks like they're spreading out across the map quite a bit. Uh, they already have Chuang Kai. Chuang Kai Wow? I don't know how to I'll say it that way. That's cool. Let's call him Len. Chuang. Let's call him CKW. CKW. Len, Len and Spermy came together, got two headshots there. Well, she's going to get his second shot of the round. And now CKW alone versus four are going to fall. And it just seemed like UBC spread out way too much of that round. Like, they they were kind of pushing multiple different areas, and they just seemed not to be playing together, and RMU punished it, really. Yeah. Yep, so just to introduce these guys, for RMU is going to be Walshi, Spermy, AWOL, Len, and Boom Boom. And over at the UBC side, as they do start on the T side, is going to be Richie, Strata, Mahone, Impetuous and CKW because we hey, cannot. My name made it. <laughs> and already starting out, it's going to be an upgraded pistol buy for UBC, and they're already going to lose Impetuous as they actually make their way into the lobby. They've got UMPs in the hands of uh, RMU, and mind you, I'm pretty sure it's a CT sided map with some few changes. Like Infer. Sorry, not Infer New. I'm not sure how you make a uh, nuke. Nuke, nuke. I can't. You can't even say new and nuke together. But uh, I, I tried. Yeah. But down to just three members with these pistols. They actually, find one kill, but they get cleaned up. Not yeah. too much they CKW, can do. CKW, more like OPW. Oh my goodness. High five. <laughs> I need a high fiver. I need to hire a high fiver. Oh my. Oh my. God. Um. Well, yeah. So pretty easy clean up around it. It looks like it's gonna be another one coming out here from. Uh, well, another easy cleanup round for RMU. Um, UBC, not seeming to. They, I think they forced in the last one. They just weren't able to get anything out of it. So, just do some upgraded pistols. Go for a quick, probably uh, vent rush. Looks like that might be where they. Yep, vent rush. Strat already down with her with the bomb. Actually, should be able to get a. Oh, but the ramp flare gonna. Spermy just didn't shoot him for a while. Though. That was. Strange. The bomb almost goes down, but Spermy denies it. Boom Boom is tagged fairly low, so he could get picked off by one of these players over near ramp. It doesn't seem like he's going to overextend this that much to allow it to happen. Does end up doing that. Richie finds a kill, but in the end, two kills going away at UBC. Pretty good for them just for a uh, upgraded pistol buy, but now here comes the first rifle. Yep, indeed, the first rifle. Round. And, uh,. Looking for UBC, they didn't get any bomb plants down, so this could be a little bit tough. No op for them. They're not gonna. Because what's really important on Nuke is actually gaining that outside control for the terrorist. 
and uh, working either working secret, you know, or finding a pick towards ramp. But with no op, you got op on Welshie, and he's actually picking towards outside, and not gonna see really too much. And the bomb's gonna be on the inner. And with this gun round, UBC need to turn the tide. Yeah, you could see Welshie out there looking towards Silo for a little bit, and actually pulls away before Richie decides to peek out. So already the counter terrorists have given up pretty much the entirety of outside. Len does push forward over towards Squeaky, gets a pick on the CKW, and now the terrorists are going to start to push towards outside. While she is holding an angle, it's kind of a tight angle towards outside boxes, but if they push together perfectly, Richie could punish this severely. Let's see if he does. He's going to start pushing up Cat while she actually unscopes. This could either help him or harm him, Richie. But is to see Len, though. Len's here. Len's here for it. He peeks up, but oh, gets sent down to the grave. And while she does find one, like you said, Richie does go down, and we're still on a man advantage for RMU. But these players didn't even cross into secret yet. They get the bomb down in there, but is it going to be enough? You've got a wall underneath. Yeah, the, they, they know that there's a great possibility for the CTs to already be down on this site. They made a lot of noise and pretty much telegraphed their pre presence that they were going down towards secret. Ooh. Boom Boom already in a position to shut down the vent push and now Strata. And to try to just get this bomb down, might be able to because there's no player down towards Locker to shut him down. Impetuous finds AWOL, so a 2v3. So this is a winnable situation for the terrorists. And Strata heard that drop down in event, gets the first. Does he know that Boom Boom's there as well? Boom Boom doesn't seem like he wants to be pushing out towards Strata right now. Instead, opts to get himself over towards the site, but doesn't know where the second player is. And Impetuous finds another, and now. All of a sudden, it's just Boom Boom, 1v2, tries to spray down Impetuous, misses it a bit, gets some damage off, knows where both players are now, but the bomb ticking away, there's no time left for him, and he has to just try to escape, and Impetuous finds the kill and gets himself an off. A really good slow play by UBC, I gotta give it to Impetuous, he found three kills there, and they took it slow. Now, with the angles that RMU was holding, they had everything set up, but just going for the retake... It started to hurt them. Impetuous just finessing RMU essentially. And uh, we're going to have the gun round go to UBC. And got three rifles followed by a 5.7. So with the three rounds they already won for RMU, it's not really a full buy for them. Yeah, I mean, CKW here might be able to farm up a little bit of money with this MP7. But uh, really, uh, RMU got screwed over heavily by that rifle round. They bought up onto an op and losing that and losing everybody without being able to claim those remaining two kills really hard him in the end. Boom Boom does get a kill with the 5-7 and CKW decides to push out while reloading while she finds his second but or while she finds his own second for the counter terrorist and now Boom Boom makes it three so now all of a sudden around that RMU were looking less favored and gets brought back by the two players that made them look less favored. Now, what's great right now is RMU, they're playing like a buddy system right now. They have control of lobby, they push them together. The other duo didn't work, but it's a wall now, down to a 1v1, and he loses it to Richie. Such a close round. And I think Boom Boom just had a, a 5-7 there, so it's honestly what they made out of that round with the equipment wasn't too bad. They played super aggressive, but CKW with the MP7 in Squeaky. I'm not sure if you saw that. Saw that. He saw the player in pushing lobby, then he switched to the player opening Squeaky and was able to find those two kills. That literally sealed the deal there and helped uh, the round dip in favor of UBC because it was just one player left. Yeah, I mean, it was really great stuff from the counter terrorists trying to bring that one back. It was incredibly close, and unfortunately, uh, they did end up losing it, but they did do a lot of economic damage. So next round on their second rifle, if they're able, or on their third rifle, uh, if they're able to really just get the damage in and win the round, it's going to be hard for UBC to continue racking up rounds because they're going to be economically reset. Yep, and while she able to pick up two kills for him, and Boom does go down, and while she looking for a 30, does enough damage to Richie, but your boy Richie, he's got two kills. It's your boy, Richie Rich. Yep, he's trying. But it's, out. it's equalized out though, here, Austin. It's just pistols in the hands of RMU. Yeah, I mean, that was really great stuff from Walshie. A phenomenal first two headshots, and almost, if he found that kill onto Richie, that would have been, that would have been godlike, but. 
Yeah, UBC not in the best position, and now they were looking to just aggress out fast towards outside, but now they got to stop and reconsider Len. Unfortunate timing as CKW is just outside the window, but now they're going to be a little bit less cautious, but CKW picks off AWOL. Spermy gets one, starts to make it a little bit dangerous, but Mahone quick to finish off that round. So UBC... They, they they won the round. It wasn't really too close at any point, other than the 3v3 after well, she, uh got two kills. But the economic damage is huge. You can see on the team, look how many players are low in money. There's four players under 2k. Mahone's the richest player with 3k. And if the counter-terrorists are able to, even if they don't get this round, if they're able to just get a bunch of damage done, kill a bunch of people, then they're going to do so much more damage to UBC, and it's going to be even harder for them to maintain or get into the lead and maintain it. Yeah, those, those pistols are a little too OP. This The angles on this map essentially super annoying for the terrorist team, and right now we're going to have a full gun round to essentially uh, this third full gun round, but already starting off, Len's going to pick up one, and he's going to get traded off by CKW, and the op on Mahone, there's no op for RMU, but... They try to go for an early pick and squeaky, but look at where Boo Boom is. He's, you know, he's on headshot level. If these guys go to contest this. Uh, I'd be scared for that. Yeah, and right now the terrorists, even though they got that one trade frag, they they've got to play extremely cautiously. They are well aware that if they lose this, they're gonna get reset, and it's gonna be hard for them to stop RMU. But. They've gotta just play this slow. Smoking towards A. It looks like they might try to take this there. CKW doing some work to try to clear out some of the commonly held angles, but at the same time, the counter terrorists aren't fast to rotate. The terrorists start pushing towards ramp, and Mahone finds a nice opening pick on the boom boom. So now AWOL is gonna be the only player on the site. He gets Molly out of exiting vent, so he's gotta go down towards locker, and he's gonna be the lone player holding it. 25 seconds, so if he can deny the bomb plant. He has a real shot at winning the round for his team, but they plant over near the corner. Now it's a 1v4, as oh, Awol, or 1v3, but make it a 0v3, because Mahomes finds a kill. <laughs> so, yeah, messed up. three to four, four rounds in a row for UBC and RMU. They win the pistol, they win the two next rounds, but they cannot capitalize on the gun round. So the rifles, they come clo really close rounds though, mind you. You know, the second round for UBC was just one player left, and then the first one was like two players left, and they're coming close, but now just pistols here for RMU. And uh, being aggressive here towards radio, they can push out ramp, but Sperm is going to get past the Molotov. And watching the lobby is actually going to be a CKW. Yeah, right now the counter-terrorists are just looking to try to get a few more picks, try to keep that economic damage going. They, uh, The terrorists were able to survive with three players last round. Nice opening dink onto CKW, but having three players survives, allowing them to start building up a bit of a bank. Uh, you can see Mahone at 5k, uh, Strata at 3k. The rest of the players are fairly low, so if the counter-terrorists are able to pick off some of these players, it's going to still be pretty good for them. Mahone opens it up onto Welshie. So now it's a 4v5, but even still, these pistols, like you can see from Len, are still able to get oh my some goodness. of the work done. AWOL finding his own. Now Len recovering the op, trying to look around the side of the crate for Impetuous. Impetuous already taking damage from a teammate, and the pistol going to th come through to finish it off. And Strata, he finds one, but this is a real winnable situation for the counter-terrorist. Len, out towards Garage. They know that the bomb is on A. However... Len is the only player who has recovered a rifle so far. He's got the up. The rest of the players are armored up. Spermy has a CZ. And Richie might just be looking the wrong way when Spermy decides to peek this. Oh my he goodness. Is. He drops Spermy down. not able to connect a kill and Len gets picked off. A 2v2. Make it a 1v2 and now... Strata finishing Spermy off. And that, that was looking like a real winnable situation. And I feel like if Spermy was just a little bit... A little bit more patient, didn't quite go for the early spray onto that player. He could have really found that kill and made the advantage even more in RMU's favor. Yeah, and so far, honestly, UBC, five rounds in a row now. RMU, honestly, if they lose this next gun round, expect a pause. Try and figure out, okay, what is UBC doing? Right now, they're on a default. They dropped the bomb, and 
The understand is actually an aggressive smoker and both Richie I'm not sure that other player is both Richie and Petrus actually back off from just that smoke and Right now the Oppa and Walshi By CT spawn and both players both teams actually playing very passive now Lens actually set up for a nice angle And I'm not too sure if uh, UBC is gonna check this now Richie's getting on Twinkie here He's watching towards secret I forgot about that call Twinkie, yeah. I forgot that some people oh! called it. And Richie gets dinked on top of it. Now he's forced to go down. Doesn't want to get a free kill. Giving up. Oh, nice play from Len finding two very early on back towards T spawn. And now a minute left. Mahone trades it, but Welshie trading right back onto, Ma onto Mahone. So 2v4, Len still located outside, just lurking around. Richie at 17. CKW, the only player left for the Terrace at 100, and he's taking the opening peak over towards over towards A-Main. Len sitting in there, just waiting. Waiting to strike, waiting to, waiting to pounce, but Spermie's going to pick off Richie, and that, that isolates CKW. They know where he is. The bomb's down, spraying down over towards Spermie. Takes some damage for his trouble. Gets another one, but AWOL going to finish him off. But now it's a dangerous situation for RMU because... UBC, they do have the money to force back into this, and it looks like they're gonna, but if you if RMU loses this round, their economy's not the best either, and they're gonna be forced right back down. Yeah, that loss bonus is gonna be reset for RMU. If uh, they cannot capitalize, they've got UMPs, though, AKA picked up, and there's UMPs on both sides. So UBC looking like they're gonna try the inside, and here they go, bomb on the back of Richie. Nade's gonna go off the door, and it's actually a fast play, and then Molotov gonna rain down, but they actually find a kill on to Sealand. And all these players on the upper site. They know there's a player possibly in mini. Mahone's watching that angle. And that's Walshi. Stuck in that side, completely smoked off, unable to help his teammates, but it's actually a man advantage for UBC. Yeah, the bomb should be going down here on the or it is down on the A side. I don't know how I missed that. And now the counter terrorists, they need to either go for the retake oh my or God. just immediately save Stratifines. Boom, boom. AWOL trades it onto Impetuous, but the counter terrorists need to make a quick decision as to whether they're going to go for this or save. And they start to go for it, and immediately two players get picked off, and Spermie falling over towards A main. And UBC, this is terrible for RMU. UBC rips it right back. Four AKs saved. And the RMU Eagles, CSGO Gold with just pistols. Now UBC, they just balls to the wall, broke the door, and out they came like hot lava. They just took over the A site, they found the picks they needed. Now mind you, it was only one pick out the gate, and RMU, they had four players up. It's a retake situation, but all the angles being held, there's four players on site, and there's one player on lobby, and you gotta give it to UBC for holding that off. But now just upgraded pistols as Strata finds two, down to Walsh, and Boom Boom, and Bomb's gonna go down here. Yeah, just a fast play out towards a UBC just looking to dominate and dominate they did. Most damage taken is on the strata who's down to 53 HP and while she maybe can make this deagle work a little bit, Richie gonna rip his head off through the gate or through the grate and impetuous finding the remaining kill on a boom boom. So UBC very good round for them. Bomb planted and no players dying and RMU, they gotta save here again. Yeah, they need to take a pause. I, I believe they I know they won a round slightly convincing as well on the ninth round but they need to take a pause here because right now UBC they're abusing the upper side and looks like they're gonna change it up they dropped the bomb and Petrus towards the elk side here and looks like they're just trying to figure out if uh, there's some kind of push coming up from RMU yeah, and I mean, UBC, they're really, they've really evolved even in these first 12 rounds because you could see earlier on they were getting aggressive and they were just getting punished for it. I mean, they weren't really losing rounds, but they were getting their players killed. People were just dying uncontested. Multiple kills were going the way of RMU, and now they've just adapted. They're saying, all right, so the aggressive plays aren't working when it's rifle v. rifle. Oh, so hold that thought. Gonna wait. Look at Len here. Oh, He's, at he sees all three players in peekaboo. He says one. He got, he's going to actually find only just one. And Boo Boom actually ran away into Toxic. And finding one kill starting off the bat. But that's a free rifle, technically, if they can find that kill or find that rifle. But there's no one able to look for that gun. As actually Spermie went for it. And CKW super lurking. And Lobby will find him, and now just down to three players are RMU. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Look at Boom Boom. He's just hiding in there. Peekaboo! He finds that kill on oh. the Petrus, and oh. these pistols chime in. And Richie down to Strata and Richie. Can't they hold this off? And they're gonna find all last three. I guess that plant slot's a little OP in my opinion, actually. It's look at how open that is. Yeah, you can get shot from anywhere there. Well, I guess that's that's why uh it's a bit of a risk. You can get shot from anywhere. But here are you they've really got to adapt to how UBC's been playing. They previously were playing really uh passively aside from the pistol rounds, but now they've gotta kinda take a little bit of a risk. I think if they just play I think if they just play two ramp, three over towards A, and just give up outside. I think it could work really well for him, and AWOL already gets a pick over towards A. Yeah, and right now, it looks like they've gone for a little bit of a similar setup to what I described, the only difference being that Welshie is located over towards the garage, just holding a passive angle. Mahone picks off Spermy. That was actually a crazy angle, I don't know if you saw that, but Spermy got into that spawn and Mahone shoulder peeks him. And honestly, I thought Mahone's gonna die there, but a great kill for him, and Boom Boom holding a nice angle as well towards the ramp side and we're equalized out honestly the advantage for the offense is UBC now just need to regroup they had the bomb gonna get picked up by impetuous and I'm not too sure where they're gonna go here because it could still be rough but Len pushes out towards the lobby they know there's a player towards mini now but I'm not sure they're gonna hear a wall drop but he comes right back up he's gonna just toss down a smoke and be trying to hold off against this a presence but the terrorists are kind of just stuck over towards lobby. They need to figure out what they want to do, and Boom Boom picks off my own. And it looks like the terrorists want to take advantage of that to try to push forward. They know that Moan did damage to Boom Boom, and Boom Boom has to play this a little more passively towards hell, but he goes up towards heaven, and now the terrorists, they look like they want to start down, pushing down towards B, where it's just Welshie holding. Yeah, Welshie in the back halls. He's got, you know, he's got some utility. He's got a full rifle, full armor and everything. And he's gonna open the door, peekaboo, but Richie's gonna fly down like an angel and take his life away and down to Boom Boom and AWOL. They've got 8 HP on Boom Boom and AWOL's in decontamination. But look at this angle from Richie. He's hiding behind the silo. This is so tough. They have a defuse kit on Boom Boom, but I think this man just wants to save. So I guess AWOL's gonna set up for an exit frag. Yeah, and while this is a good call, I mean, with only three rounds, well, two rounds after this one left, uh, it's getting to the point where RMU are going to have to stop saving. This is pretty much their last save if they want to have any chance of making this a 6-9. to nine. So we're saving these two rifles is very crucial. So it's good that Boom Boom is in a position where it's very... Ex it's impossible for him to be killed now. Unless there's an insane wall bang that no one's ever discovered. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is definitely a CT-sided map, but considering the pedigree that we're seeing, both these teams, they've come a long way, they have the experience, and there is the tactical I've been waiting for from RMU. Thank God they pulled it off, And but there's, what, there's two rounds left? And yeah, I guess, I think... best case scenario, like you said, 9-6 for RMU, or for UBC, but I don't know, like, I expect that RMU's gonna pull out, like, a... You know, they're Hogwarts strats from the T side. Because both teams, they're definitely good good teams, but UBC is dominating the T side right now. Yeah, I think I, I think that with Nuke, um, originally it was just a very CT side of map. People were like, oh, they didn't really change enough. But as it's gone forward, people have started to see the merit in T side. But at the end of the day, I think it really just depends on how your team's able to play it. Um, it's just UB. It, if you can get if UBC can get to an eleven to four score line, it's definitely not that T sided. I think that RMU is gonna have a hell of a game to play if they want to bring it back from that point. But I think that if they can get it to six to nine, I think that the T side can be skewed in their way enough that they can start to bring it back. Especially after what we saw from them. What was it? Mon uh, Monday? Wednesday? It was Wednesday. After what we saw from them on Wednesday. I think RMU definitely have a chance if they can go for it 6-9. 5-10 maybe, but if it gets to 4-11, they're definitely out. So what do you think that they've got to do to start bringing it back? For RMU right now, they need to understand that right now, UBC isn't abusing the outside. And they're hitting the inside so fast. And 
UBC tried outside of maybe twice now, and it has somewhat worked, but the pistols were devastating against them towards the outside, and they've been punished. And then the aggressive play from RMU towards Lobby, it works slightly, but now, like, with the economy in UBC's favor, they can't do that anymore. So right now, I'd say UB RMU just need to play very passive, let the bomb plant, and go for these, you know, these retakes. But we already saw that for upper, right? And... Honestly, they just need to make some kind of aggressive play, maybe from the outside, like we saw before from Len, I believe, right? He found two kills from T-Spawn, and that's what they need coming into these last few rounds. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree, but you can see why they'd be cautious going towards that. UBC have <laughs> yeah. shown themselves so far this game to be phenomenal aimers, and RMU, while they are no... While they aren't terrible at aiming themselves, they are going to be... They're going to be cautious about doing it. It's you look at the uh, look at the frag count from the opposite team. I mean, three players above ten, and RMU have been doing a pretty good job as well. Lam, Welshi, and Awol all have the same amount. Yeah, considering the uh, score line, right? The rounds, the, their kills aren't that different from UBC. Yeah, definitely. And now, it, actually, the smoke start to rain towards outside, and this prompts a rotate down towards B from Awol. But look at the terrorists; they're starting to go. They're still in lobby, but they have one player pushing towards ramp, and I'm wondering if they're just trying to fake out the counter-terrorists here. Throwing utility over towards Spermy, CKW, Steamy, seeing if he can find any picks here. Spermy just lurking in that smoke, and now the terrorists starting to push out towards A, and Len trying to hold it the best he can. Mahone trades him after getting one of his own, and now the counter-terrorists completely locked out of the site. Oh my goodness, this this double fake. They throw the smokes utility outside, they throw it towards ramp, and that's just CKW by himself who makes that convincing. And it was two players who rotated from heaven to hell, and now UBC have control of the upper side, and here comes the retake situation. Spermie's gonna pick up one, A wall's gonna get traded right off, and now just down to Spermie. Yeah, phenomenal spray from Mahone, picking both players, pushing from heaven, and... After the initial picks for the counter-terrorists, I believe it was a 2v4 from Moan and Richie. They just played phenomenally there. Great job to them. And now RMU, they're going to force him to make it 5-10, but either way, UBC are going to be extremely happy with this half. Look at the economy on the terrorists, too. I mean, they've just had control of the economics for so long. CKW, the lowest player on their team, but Richie is up at 14. He was at 16k this round. RMU, the economic damage they were doing earlier just didn't carry into these lower rounds. And at, at the end of the day, it was that round that they suffered in the loss that they suffered in round 10 that I think sealed the fate for this half. Yeah, this is the aggressive and the aim duels that UBC's been getting or doing actually has been punishing RMU. But look at okay, even that. That's kind of ridiculous. Impetuous. What was that? Crisp. I mean, lock boys. Like, come on. I don't know if you guys, anyone gets that meme, but um, I uh, there's, there's a this there's, there's a YouTuber who who says that that calls out Stewie for cheating. But anyways, just four players left for RMU now. We're here in the last round of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. RMU versus UBC, and uh, we've got three UMPs and a rifle. And so far, UBC are just milking the time right now. Yeah, so 45 seconds left. This is either going to work really well or really poorly for them because right now the counter terrorists are really spread out throughout the map. If they hit somewhere fast, it's going to be very difficult to retake. But if they allow the counter terrorists to get grouped up, if they go towards that grouped up site, it's going to be difficult for them very late to get it. But Lone and Strata already with oh two kills. Richie goodness. finding one of his own. Just CKW needs one to make it a team ace as a wall is 1v5. With four players, three players, sorry, Strata's 94 health. Three players at max health. Oh, and he spots Mahone, but. Guys, that guy's nuts, and that's gonna be your half. Honestly, I did not expect 4 11. I thought another round would go in favor of RMU, but here we have it 11 to 4. UBC start off now on the favorite side on this map, and this is not looking good for RMU. They need, you know. They need some some crazy strats here on the T side. They need to win the pistol especially. So we're gonna be paying attention paying attention to RMU on the pistol side as they ready up. But also, uh, 
Did you expect this scoreline? I mean, did I expect it two rounds ago? Absolutely, but <laughs> at, the of, at the start of this game, I mean, we've we've seen RMU from their previous, from at least on Wednesday, on the counter terrorist side, they can be weaker than they otherwise should be, but on their terrorist side, they've been able to show up huge. And while I didn't expect 11-4, I'm not exactly surprised with the level of aim that UBC is bringing in that. RMU allowed that scoreline to happen. You could, it just felt like halfway through the first half, they really just started to fall off. The economic damage wasn't going their way. So I think it was a combination of them falling off and UBC waking up and they just weren't able to recover. So they really need to just forget about last half, come in here, play their best because we absolutely know that they can show up on their terrorist side. Yeah, they definitely have the potential here and they're going to have, you know, Spurry with a Tech 9. Now, this is dropped to him by AWOL. Now, AWOL has, also has a smoke as well. He's going to actually vandalize the windows from above. And we haven't really seen this from UBC, I think. They don't even use the roof smokes, but in they go towards the upper side. And UBC finding these trades off in their favor. But Spurry able to try to chime in with that Tech 9. And he's essentially a one man army. He misses the knife onto the vents. He's waiting for this rotate to come through, but Len gonna go down and down to a 1v3. He switches, has a tech 9, he needs to get these kills. And no way Richie shuts that down. What? Yeah, I mean, it, it started a little close for a little bit there, but UBC, they just, in the end, they just overpowered the terrorist side. Is it, and... <laughs> is it the aim that's causing this gap? Like, I see the strats, definitely, for UBC. Like, we saw that crazy fake, the double fake. You know, outside utility, ramp by CKW, and then they just balls to the wall, make their way in upper, but I feel like this aim is kind of immense for RMU. I mean, what you really got to look at is look at the frag distribution of RMU on RMU. They have Len on 12, Welshie on 11, AWOL on 10. Oh, nice, nice shot from Len, proving why he's the top fragger. But you look at them, and then you look at, I mean, even AWOL, you look at Spermy, AWOL, and Boom Boom, they just haven't really been showing up. AWOL, for a bit there, he had a good streak going, but at the end, he just had fallen off a little bit. Whereas, you look at UBC, you have Richie, Mahon, Strata, they've all been showing up, CKW's shown up at times. Impetuous, he's been kind of the first to die in many rounds, but... It's been difficult for the terrorists to bring this into a winnable game. It might be here now that they're in a 2v1. And nice nice job from Boom Boom not letting Richie's jump peak uh, end him there. But I think that unless those, unless AWOL, unless Boom Boom, unless Spermy can all start waking up and play at the levels that we truly know they can, I, I don't see RMU winning this match. Winning this map or this match. Interesting. Interesting. So, honestly, RMU, like, they start out fine, but UBC just, their default. I guess they just know how to really work the T side here, and now they're on the CT side. I'm sure they know the basics to this, but Mahone challenges this, but CKW able to chime in. He gets straight off right away, and the pistol from Mahone, he still continues to do damage. There's actually three of these guys towards Big Garage, and... Right now, they have no control towards the other sites, but they hold the outside. And Boo Boom's got a Clarion. I'm going to trigger everyone. And two AKs for AWOL and Len. And they're going to slowly pick this off. They just need to play this a little bit slower here for RMU. Yeah, and good job from uh, good job from Len, I believe it was, that picked off that second player. But 3v3, the scout... The scout's really the only danger they have unless they get close enough for the CZ to really do work. And right now, the terrorists, I think, are playing it uh, just perfectly. Impetuous oh. might be in a position. Ooh. I think you curse. Oh, you, you gave them the warning. <laughs> you gave them the warning, Osto. The CZ. The CZ. Oh, is right outside. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the last three members of ARM, you can make their way towards ramp. They're gonna actually listen for these players who are in the upper side and watching towards hell. It's gonna be boom boom, followed by Len. And they're gonna actually look at them reading this. And they're gonna the make their way down. Already, already rotating down towards oh. Vent. Impetuous located over in Locker. He can shut this bomb plant down and 
If he shuts it down... Oh my god! 10 seconds left! They need to get the bomb down! 3v2, Strata finds a deeg shot, now it's Len. Six seconds, he has to plant this he's, bomb. He's got it, he's got he just, it. Oh, he does. They give him too much time, but he gets spotted out by Impetuous, and UBC ripped that round back, and... Oh, this is terrible for RMU. If they lost pistol, they were going to be sitting 4-14, four to 14, but now, losing this round? If UBC is able to get the consecutive rounds going, they're going to be sitting at 15-5 to 5 before RMU is able to contest it with re weapons. Oh my uh, it'll god. Be, it'll be 14 to 5. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the economy too much. I, I'm dumb. Impetuous. You even call out the CZ early on, and they, I thought they're gonna, all three, they're gonna make their way into Hut and die to Impetuous. But regardless, this man still makes the play for UBC. Denies the bomb, like you said. Nine seconds left. The bomb goes with just half a second left. And then, you know, I from mean, there, you, the CZ finds last player. You even gotta look at that situation too, because I'm sure that you know the CZ does not do too incredible damage at a uh, significant range. But even there, he he hit the headshot through that smoke. He hit the headshot and a follow-up shot on yeah, that player. Yeah, he dinked. Right? Yeah. So even the crosshair placement went from him was just incredible. There, that was that was just a really well played situation from him. Yep, and well, she gonna start with. Uh... No, 4 HP. He must have stepped on a Lego Lego or something early on the round, but he's got 4 HP. Yeah, that's why he's at 4 HP. <laughs> 5 to 13 Those right Legos, now. Man. Dude, they're devastating. But anyways... That's why the ops are one-hit kill. Shoots Legos. The thing is, what I wanted to point out here is, while she has full utility, he better spend that before he dies. Or it, that's that's a lot of money like gone to waste, right? But we're seeing a slow play from RMU. They get the somewhat outside control. But look at Strata. Just he's like an impatient, happy dog here, just going back and forth on the stairs. He is. Look, just look at his face. He's going in and out. Impatient, but happy. Yes. But also a dog. Yeah. But the thing, even the thing is, Spermy and uh, Spermy and Welshy, the only two players outside, they were the only rifles too. So if Welshy would have been kicked off early on, it would have been extremely <gasps> difficult to recover. And now one v one, Welshy puts it into a one v two and extremely close there for UBC and RMU. They force into that round. So if they're not able to convert this round into a win, it's going to be UBC on fifteen and RMU. Forcing into that round was a huge mistake. They've forced themselves into a situation where they have to force every single round. And if they were to have just saved, they could have tried to, you know, try to just lose that round or at least get some damage off, win it out from there. But now, if they're not able to convert one of these forces, they, they're they just done. Yeah, I've been... Honestly, if all she didn't step on that Lego, it would have been a different situation because Mahone comes in that vent, right? Finds... He just... Speed Demon! Zergling Rush! Yeah, we all know it's at CSL here what Zergling Rushes are, but uh... You know, we, we definitely saw that play being made so fast by Mahone, but look at this, CKW spots all these guys towards Alkazad, he makes his escape, and drops the smoke as well, and oh my god. Len. Len, phenomenal deagle shot on Distrata, and if RMU needed an opener to get themselves into it, that's the one. They pick the outside player, and Petrus trades it onto Welshie. And then, oh no, this is already falling apart for RMU. Two more kills going the way of the counter terrorist, and CKW pushes up secret and finds Len. And what looked like maybe a chance for the terrorists is quickly shut down. I need to stop talking because they just keep listening and they keep winning rounds! Oh my god. I don't know if you saw that, but boom boom. While that Molly was spreading, I felt like there was a sixth player there, and the sixth player was actually that Molotov. It just wanted to burn Boom Boom alive. It just kept inching away at his toes. And that just made him tough to fight that player in Hunt. And now we're sealed the match point. But can UBC find map point? They've got full utility, they got money in the bank. Actually, no, they don't. Oh, this could be interesting. If Army can down. force this down. Uh I, this this is pretty much a counter terrorist round. I'm oh I my want to god talk about that last round a little bit. Oh my so, god. So I really want to talk about that because there's a lot of things that went down that I don't I don't know if you saw. Um I, I was lucky to be watching the right player at the right time. So the terrorists put an incredible amount of trust in Len that round. Boom Boom bought nothing and gave him an AK. Oh and he bought fully out. He bought everything. 
Boom Boom had a pistol. He had a Glock. However, they, they're like, all right, we're going to use our UMPs. We're going to use the Seiki. We're going to go out fast towards A. However, what Len decided to do is he decided to go towards Hut, ran into the Molly, and started spraying someone down with the only rifle on the team. Yikes. What? So, in a situation where you're obviously being trusted to be the heavy hitter, you have the big gun, you have the gun that has the potential to turn the entire round in your favor. Why are you mm -hmm. making stupid plays like that, running out into the open? I understand that you can get one pick, maybe start to bring the round back, get one pick through that molly, but you're going to take so much damage, and you already know that one of your other players didn't buy armor to buy you that weapon. So you're really the player to keep it. The rest of your teammates, they have UMPs. Those aren't bad guns. But you can't be making those selfish decisions to try out and get one pick just to leave yourself at low health while the rest of the team is also trying to push out and get picks. Yeah, I think what kind of really sealed the fate was that incendiary in the first place. With that play, though, I can see what Len and RMU were trying to look for. And you get the, give him the AK. He's clearly been fragging harder than everyone else on RMU, with that being said. But um, he probably had to spawn as well. So coming out the gate, Incendiary's there. You know, hello, darkness, my old friend. There's not much he can do, right? He's What they're aiming for was what UBC's been doing. They, they balls the wall, come out a squeakier hut, and find all these kills. Just rushing that upper site. So it's just unfortunate that happened to him. I would say it was a desperate play. They maybe could have done something Definitely. else, but it hasn't worked out for them, right? Um, UBC, it worked out for them, but that incendiary really sealed the deal there. Doing so much damage to that player who unfortunately had the only rifle. But, you know, with that being said, guys, we're into the second map. It's going to be My Rage, Mirage, Mirage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I like to I like to call it my rage, but um, you know, this I play this map way Dust too many three. times. Dust three, there you go. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. But guys, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. I'm here with Austo. My name is True Lie. We're here for the round of eight. UBC, arm you. Don't go away. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.